guys, it's Mrs. White here, Miss Hurst. We are back at it doing another, another flip classroom lesson in section 1.3, measuring segments. So today we're specifically only talking about line segments, maybe their distance, how um, we can use them on a graph also. So we're going to go ahead and start, just like last lesson, we're going to start with some definitions. All right, we've seen the word postulate before, so here's a formal definition, which actually also goes along with the word axiom. So you'll see either the word axiom or postulate within the textbook or maybe some practice problems. It is a rule that is accepted without proof. And what I tell you guys to think of this is as common sense, okay? When I say that, it means that it's just a known fact, but common sense. I'm five feet four. I can't be five four and five six at the same time. I'm only one height. So that would be a postulate, common sense worthy. Okay? The next word is between, and yes, this does have a math definition. Okay? The word between in math and in geometry is when you have three points that are collinear. So that word collinear shows up again. And remember, collinear co and line means that they're on the same line, okay? So the three points have to be on the same line, and it's said to be in the middle or somewhere in between the two other points. So make sure that you recognize when they say the word between, it's definitely collinear. The word coordinate you've seen in Algebra 1, um, and you've seen it on the real number line, you've seen it on graphs, but the real number that corresponds to a point on a number line. So when we draw out your number line or on a graph, a coordinate, okay, you have, this would be point A, it's on the coordinate 1 on this number, or this line graph that I'm showing. So, uh, coordinate is the real number that corresponds to that point. The word congruent is a major, major word that you will see in geometry. Congruent, um, some of you probably have heard before, you've heard it in math. But when we talk about congruent, it means that they're having the same length. So when we talk about congruent segments, their line segments have the same length, or they're equal in distance from the endpoints. Okay? And last word on this one is the word distance. Okay, let me move this up and extend the page. Distance, and they have some key words within this definition that I'm going to highlight because it's very important to remember that the distance is the absolute value, which you've learned before, and we'll discuss that in a second, of the difference, which is a math word, of the coordinates on a number line. This always positive is in capitals because it's really important to know that the distance between two points is always a positive number, even if you're working backwards on the number line. But let's remember and think back to your um, prior math days. The absolute value, remember, is the symbol that looks like this, okay? And we're doing the difference. So I'm just going to put some variables, x and y, which we typically use in geometry. So the absolute value of the difference of the two numbers. Remember, absolute value always ends up being a positive value, okay, a positive number. So that's why you have the always positive there. So you can kind of use this little formula and subtract and take the absolute value to find the distance between any two points. So here are a couple of the definitions, but one of our main points and our main topics is a postulate on the next one, okay? Um, so let's take down the segment addition postulate. What I always tell you guys first is just to take a pause and just copy down all, this, all these words. And then I'm going to draw a diagram that, that will help explain all these letters and all these words and what they mean. So go ahead and pause and write out the segment addition postulate. Segment addition postulate says if B is between, so that's that between, so we know we have three points that are going to be collinear, okay? And B is going to be between A and C, okay? So that's what the diagram looks like for segment addition. Then they give you this equation because there's an equal sign. So we're going to be setting up some algebra equations and variables and solving for lengths of segments with the segment addition postulate. It says then AB, so that means this part of the segment, okay, when there is no, nothing above the notation AB, just like we were doing lines and line segments, if there's nothing above it, that means that it's telling you the distance between these two points. We're given an actual number that we can plug in. So this part of the segment AB plus this part of the segment 
BC equals this whole line segment that those two make up. So it's giving you this equation, this part plus this part equals the whole thing. And I tell you guys to remember the segment addition postulate is saying part plus part equals the whole segment. Part plus part equals the whole. So that's really what that equation says. You can flip that around and say, all right, if I was given the equation, if AB plus BC equals AC, then we know that A is going to, or B is going to be between A and C. So it's kind of just flipping the definition around. So let's go ahead and introduce Ms. Hurst back into the video because she's going to do some numbers with Yay. this. Yay. All right, guys. So let's, let's do some examples on the next slide. You're going to go ahead and use the segment addition postulate, so part plus part equals the whole thing, to try to figure out what kind of equation to set up and actually go through and solve it. So go ahead and take a second, pause this, write it down, see if you can figure out what's going on. Before you do that, or if you've already done that, we're going to go ahead and actually represent VC with the variable x. So I'm going to put that over here on top of its part. So we know that part plus part equals the whole thing. Well, what is part one? Part one is 17. What is part two? Well, part two is this part right here is x. We don't know it yet. Equals the whole thing. The whole thing is represented as being 36. So now we have an algebraic equation that we can solve. If you haven't already tried this on your own, go ahead and pause now and solve it, and we'll see if we get the same answer. So hopefully you guys subtracted the 17. And we got that x equals 19. So what does bc equal? bc, and again, notice there's no notation over top of it. So we're talking about the distance of bc is equal to 19, and that's the answer to our question. Okay, so pause, draw this picture, try to set it up on your own, part plus part equals whole thing. And then when you come back, we'll see if we set up the same equation and we got the same answer. Read the directions though. It says find the value of x and a, b. So not only do we need to find out what x is, we also need to plug in a, b. Okay, so pause now and solve. All right, so hopefully the equation you set up to solve for x is part plus part equals the whole thing. So we're going to say 2x plus 6x minus 4 is equal to 36. Remember from algebra, we need to combine our like terms. So 2x plus 6x gives me 8x minus 4 equals 36. We're going to add 4 to both sides. 8x is equal to 40. So the only thing left to do now is divide, and we get that 8 that x equals 5. Okay, so that's one of our answers. We've answered this question right here, x equals 5. Well, now I need to find out what the length or distance of a, b is. a, b is represented by this first part right here. Okay, so if a, b is represented by 2x, then I need to plug in the value of x, which is 5. So a, b is equal to 2x. We're going to use the substitution property. We're going to say this is equal to 2 times 5. Okay? Well, 2 times 5 is 10. And so I now have my second answer. Awesome job. Don't you love doing algebra and geometry? I do. All right. So let's go back to the word congruent. And this is just um, kind of a difference where what equals what equals means and what congruent means because in your math learning you typically said things were equal you algebraically said things are equal so ab remember is a number or a distance so numbers are going to be equal to each other okay but in geometry when we have segments when we have um, later on we're going to have triangles being congruent to triangles any type of figure in geometry is said to be congruent, not equal. Hence the reason why we say congruent is equal in the physical sense. So the congruent symbol is the little equal symbol with the, I guess it's a squiggle, I don't know what the Spanish term is. Do you know the Tilde. Tilde, okay. I always just say squiggle, I took French. Anyways. Um, so this is the congruent symbol. So please don't set numbers congruent to each other. Numbers are equal, um, but know the dif difference between the two. Also, when we're marking on a diagram, this little notch here that's sliding over, that you need to pay attention to. 
because that means congruent, that these two are going to be congruent. If you see the little hash mark there, that CD is going to be congruent to AB. So on a diagram, sometimes it won't tell you that AB is congruent to CD, but it'll show you on the diagram. So just pay attention to all those little symbols. Okay? All right, back to algebra. All right, so we can actually use a coordinate plane to count how big a segment is and actually find their measures. So what we're trying to do is figure out, are these segments actually congruent? Are their measures equal? So again, there's that difference between equal and congruent. We're going to start first by plotting these. So hopefully you remember how to plot a point. We're going to do the x-coordinate first. So my x-coordinate on j is negative 3 going left 3 and positive 4. So we're going to go up 4. So from the origin, I'm going to move over 1, 2, 3 to the left and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's my point, and I want to name it j so that I know that's where j went. All right, so k is at 2, 4. So right 2, up 4. Here's k. And it says that we are going to graph the following points, and we're actually going to talk about the segment JK. So I'm going to connect these guys. Okay. All right, so then we're going to plot point L, 1, 3. So right 1, up 3. Name him. There's L. And then we're going to plot M at 1, negative 2. So right 1, down 2. So here's M, and it says over here that LM is also a segment, so I'm going to connect those two points. All right, so now, how do I tell if these two segments are congruent? Well, I have to check their measures and see if their measures are equal. So if we count JK, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, I know that JK is 5. Notice I did not put the notation over top of it because this represents the distance. All right, so we're going to count LM. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So LM is also 5. All right, so can I say that JK is equal to LM? The answer is yes. So is JK with the segment congruent to LM? Yes. So the question is, we wanted to determine if the two segments were congruent, and we figured out that yes, they are in fact congruent. Oh, so we're going to talk about what a midpoint is, right? So looking at a midpoint, what do you think a midpoint is? A midpoint is somewhere in the middle. Unlike the word between, though, it's exactly center, right? So a midpoint is the point on a segment that divides the segment into two equal parts. We've seen equal in an equation before, so this is going to be able to set up an equation for us. It cuts the segment in half. Again, there's another number, half, that we might be able to use if we're told the whole thing. Well, let's look at a picture of what this looks like. So, for example, M is the midpoint of line AB if AM is equal to MB, all right? Um, so, we're looking at this picture. And we want to figure out, all right, so M is the midpoint. That means that using the markings that Ms. White just showed you, that AM and MB are congruent. Okay, they're the same length. They've got the same measure. Go ahead and pause this after these questions come out and see if you can figure out how to set up these equations on your own and solve for what they're looking for in each question. Read the questions carefully. They're worded differently. And make sure you're following. They're talking about A, B, A, M. They're looking for M, B. Make sure you're paying attention to that. Right, go ahead and pause this now. Draw the picture and see if you can solve them. Okay. So looking at example number one, M is the midpoint of A, B. So again, that means that A, M and M, B are exactly the same. So A, M is six. I'm going to label that up here. It's six centimeters. We know that M is the midpoint, so therefore, without even looking at the question, I know that MB is also 6 centimeters. Well, do I have enough information to answer the question? Yes. What's the measure of MB? The answer is 6 centimeters. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase my picture so I can answer the next question. The next one says that M is the midpoint. MB, so we're looking at this section right here in red, is 9.8 centimeters. All right, read the question carefully. What's the distance of AB? So AB is from the beginning all the way to the end. All right, back in the definition we said that a midpoint cuts it in half. 
So if I've already got half of it, I just need to double it. So we're going to do 9.8, and we're going to double it, so I'm going to multiply that by 2. You could also do 9.8 plus 9.8, since we know AM would be 9.8 centimeters. And my answer here is 19.6 centimeters. Looking at the third question, and again, let me erase what I've got going on here. And you can always just draw a separate picture each time. AM is 7. The whole thing from A to B is 14. So is that enough information to prove that M is in the middle? Well, how do we think about this? Well, I need to know that AM and NB are the same. So if AM is 7 and MB is and the whole thing is 14, let's put an X here. What does that have to be in this situation? Well, we can do what we did earlier using the segment addition postulate. 14 is equal to 7 plus X, or in other words, 7 is equal to X. Oh, awesome. This is equal to 7. Are they the same? Absolutely. So, is this the midpoint? Your answer is yes. Awesome. All right, so let's take a look at the last couple examples. Now we're going to be throwing in some variables with the word midpoint in the directions. Please pay attention to directions very carefully. It says, in the following pictures, assume M is the midpoint. So they're telling us right now that M is the midpoint to start. And then we're going to find the indicated length. So here's the first one. We'll go ahead and do this one together, and then I'll have you do the second one on your own. First off, the indicated length is JK. So we will be having to plug back in X once we solve it. I am told that M is the midpoint, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that on my diagram. You'll see throughout geometry, being able to mark things correctly will help you in the long run. So I know that those two are equal. Now, the equations that we've been setting up before with segment addition gave us part plus part equals the whole thing. But when we look at this, they don't tell us what the whole thing is, so we're not going to do part plus part equals the whole. What we're going to know to do now is since we saw the word midpoint and we marked midpoint on our diagram, is that the word equal was in that definition. Both sides are equal. So why don't we set both sides equal to each other now? Okay, so 8x plus 2 is equal to 6x plus 20. We have variables on both sides. We're just going to go ahead and solve this equation. Um, subtract the 6x from both sides. You're left with 2x plus 2 equals 20. Let's go ahead and subtract the 2, which leaves us with 2x equals 18. And then finally divide by 2. So x equals 9. Typically in algebra, we stop there when we solve for x. Geometry, we got to read because it says find jk. So what I'm going to have to do is plug it back in and figure out from j to k. Well, we know that these are two equal, so I'm actually going to plug it back in from j to m first. 8 times 9 plus 2, okay? That will give me that j to m is 74. So I know that j to m is 74. Without even having to plug it back in, I know that m to k is 74. Now, to find the whole length, we're going to do the part plus part equals the whole. 74 plus 74 equals our j to k. Okay, so when you solve that, that leaves us with what? 148 equals jk, the length of this segment. And that is your final answer, not x equals 9. So please just pay attention to read. All right, I would like you guys to do this last one on your own, okay? So pause it, work through it, and then you can come back and check your answer once I go through it. Find Q to M. So once again, they're still equal, so we're going to do 2Y plus 60 equals 3Y plus 20. Solving that, if you're going to subtract the 2Y from both sides, you're left with 60 equals Y plus 20. Okay, And then subtract a 20 from both sides, so you're left with final answer of Y to equal 40. When we plug it back in from Q to M, which is that segment right there, QM, the length of that is going to be 2 times 40 plus 60, which gives us 80 plus 60, or a final answer of the length of QM is equal to 140. So that is our final answer. All right, so 
that is the end of section 1.3. A little reminder, don't forget to do your question. And then it's our first quiz of the semester. Study for section 1.2 to 1.3 quiz tomorrow or else.